Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. I know it's been a while since I did my last video, but I've been busy. Busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest, as my papa used to say. Anyway, today we're going to do part four of the Synology NAS series. I'm going to show you how to add your Synology NAS to your Active Directory domain, if you have one. Uh, it's a, just a better way or another way uh, to control your Synology NAS and integrate it with your uh, Microsoft Active Directory network. So, buckle up. Let's uh, get the video started right now. Well, before we get started, you have to make sure that you have your Windows Active Directory domain installed and configured properly. You have DNS set up, all that good stuff. You know your administrator, your domain administrator username and password because you're going to need all that in order to connect your Synology NAS to your Active Directory. So make sure you've done your uh, preparation work. Uh, I have a lot of videos out there on setting up Active Directory and setting up a Windows uh, 2016 or 2012 server uh, so you can have Active Directory. So make sure you have those steps in place before you get started. All right, so we're at our Synology NAS, which is named Test NAS, and there's a few things I wanted to show you first. So come in here under Control Panel and then go to Network. Now, it's very important that you decide on your server name and you set it and leave it alone uh, because this is one of the ways that Active Directory is going to register this machine is by using this server name. So when we actually go to, to join the Active Directory domain, if you come back later after you join the domain and try to change your server name, you're going to have problems with Active Directory. So I'm going to leave mine set at test NAS, but your mileage might vary. Uh, make sure you set this in here properly uh, before you move uh, any further. And then I'm going to come under here into the network interface, and I'm going to go to LAN 1, and I'm going to edit it. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you've got your IP address in there. I would recommend that you use a static IP address. A server is not something you want changing IP addresses on you. It can cause a lot of problems with DNS and Active Directory. So I've got my IP address hard-coded in here. I've got my subnet mask. I've got my gateway to the internet. And then this is very important as well. Make sure you have the DNS server of your Active Directory domain controller set in here properly or none of this is going to work. So the next thing you want to do is come into control panel at the main menu and go to make sure you're in advanced mode. If I click this, it puts it into basic mode and you will not see what you need to see to make this work. So make sure you click into advanced mode and then come over here to domain LDAP and we're going to join a domain. So we'll click the join domain and we're going to enter MCS dot local because that is the name of my active directory domain and then what I'm going to put in here is my IP address of my DNS server or my active directory server it's 192.168.5.1 the rest of the options should not be required let me check domain options I don't think we're going to need any of these and I believe now all we have to do is click on apply and then it'll prompt us for the uh, username that has uh, permissions to join the domain. Usually that is your domain administrator. In my case, it's Adama. Now, if you want to put, if you wanted to put this account into a specific organizational unit, you could do it. But for sake of simplicity, we're just going to click on next. Now, what's going to happen is, is the, the big one of the big things about Active Directory is your your time needs to be synced on all your machines, all your workstations, all your servers. If the time is more than ten minutes out of sync, the uh, Kerberos will have a problem assigning tickets or security certificates. So it tells you the system time will be changed according to the time on the Windows domain server when joining the domain and the domain controller will become the NTP server, so keep that in mind. System DNS server settings will be changed if you specify a DNS server IP, and the network service will restart when these settings are applied. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. And hopefully, if all goes well, it will join our Active Directory domain. 
All right, so now it's doing the domain status check, and hopefully we'll get all greens on this, but fingers, toes, legs, arms crossed. This process can take a few minutes. So it looks like I've got all green checks, so the connection works. There are no conflicting or conflicting host names. Uh, it works between Synology and something else. Let's see. Uh, yeah, an LDAP and Kerberos. And the MTU is configured properly and the time is synced. So if we click on finish now, now we should be a member of the domain. And we can verify that by coming up here to domain users. And you'll see now that we have all of our domain users listed from our MCS domain and all of our domain groups. So, success. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to my Active Directory domain controller here real quick. And I'm gonna go into Active Directory users and computers and I just wanna make sure, even though I uh, the Synology told me there was success, of course, Microsoft, you see they don't give you any other option but to view the updates. If I go to computers, you'll see now that I have test NAS is right here. By default, remember where it said uh, <clears throat> the organizational unit on the Synology NAS? I could have put the organizational unit in here, but I just find it's easier to come back after the fact. But whenever you add a computer to your domain, you will get a computer entry here. And if I right click on it and go to properties, it's going to tell me it's testnas.mcs.local. It's not going to be able to determine the operating system or anything like that, but at least it put it into the Active Directory. So it is a server, so what I want to do is just drag this over into my organizational unit over here that I created, or my filing folder. And I'm going to just, uh, I'm just going to left click and drag it over to servers. Now it's going to warn you if you move objects within Active Directory, uh, it can prevent your computer from working, or the system from working the way it was designed. If you had group policies assigned to this to, to this device, it could foobar them, but uh, we don't, so we don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to tell it yes. And now if I come over here to my servers, I should see my test NAS in the Active Directory users and computers. Now the other thing I want to do is go into DNS and go to my forward lookup zones for mcs.local and I should see test NAS in here somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, test NAS. So test NAS has also uh, securely registered itself with DNS as well as Active Directory. And that's what we were looking for. All right, so now that we've added this machine or this server to our Active Directory, what does that mean in terms of user management? Well, that's kind of a complicated answer. I'm going to try and uh, get it as clear as I can. Uh, remember when we created the dad and the mom user. So if we come up under here under user, mom and dad are still there. And mom and dad can still log on just like they did before. However, so now we have the ability to add Active Directory domain users to our shared folders. So let's come over and do that real quick. Let's go to shared folder. Let's go to the Movies folder, and let's uh, choose Edit. And then if we come over here to Permissions, you'll remember if we're looking up here, it says Local Users. Those are users local to the Synology NAS and nothing else. And Mom and Dad already have access. Dad has Read Write. Mom has Read Only. But say I wanted to add, say, my account to this. I want to be able to log into this NAS as well. It's simply a matter of coming up here to local users and changing that to domain users. And then all I have to do is look for my account. Scroll down here. So there's my JStraley account. And I want to be able to read write on that share. So once I select my, my name and give it read write, I click on OK. And now suddenly I have access to the movies folder. I want to do the same thing with the Photos folder, so I'll go to Edit, go to Permissions, come down to Domain Users, find my account, it's here somewhere, right here, and we'll give it read-write access as well. Easy as that. 
so now that I'm uh, now that I've done uh, joined it to the Active Directory and I've come over here to File Manager. So now if I go under Network, when I go to Test NAS because I'm logged in as Jay Straley on this computer, when I go over to Test NAS, it should not prompt me for a login now. Remember before it would prompt me for a username and password, but now that it's a now that I'm a member of the Active Directory and the Synology NAS is a member of the Active Directory, I don't need to go through that uh, extra login procedure. And if I go into the Movies folder, I should be able to see them. I should be able to delete a file, and I can. And I can go over to Photos, and I can uh, I can delete a, a file or a folder under here. I can create a new folder. Call it Test, right? All right, so let's see if we can copy some data over there now as well. We'll just use, uh, we'll just grab a few folders here. We'll copy them and we'll come back over to the network to the NAS. And we will paste them. Now these are small files, so you're not going to see huge uh, network speeds going to go out and calculate them first. I probably should have done some videos, but you'll see my speeds look uh, I'm going to skip any existing files. You'll see my speeds look abysmal, but we'll do a copy of a video here as well, and it's already copied it over. So let's come down here to video, and we'll do our uh, we'll do our old standby. We'll go to uh, sci-fi, and we'll copy the Alien series and see how it does with that. So we'll copy it back to our NAS, go to the movies folder, and they will paste those files there. And you'll see we're getting pretty good, pretty good write speeds. They'll come up, they go up to about 100 megabit, megabyte per second. So there you go. That's uh, another benefit of, of adding your Synology NAS to your Active Directory uh, domain controlled network is that you get the seamless login uh, no matter uh, whether you're on a Windows machine or connecting to the Synology NAS. Well, that's pretty much all there is to adding uh, your uh, Synology NAS to your Active Directory domain. And uh, if you have an Active Directory domain, I would strongly recommend you do that. Uh, and or if you're running Synology in a corporate environment, it, it allows you to easily and seamlessly integrate the uh, Synology uh, device with your Active Directory domain uh, controlled network. Uh, it just makes sense. That way you have one place to centralize all your permissions. So it just makes it easier to manage. Now I want to talk about a minute about uh, reliability on these Synology devices because if you're using them in a business they're mission critical. If they are mission critical Synology does sell several NAS units that are rack mountable. They come with dual power supplies. Uh, uh, you know, for redundancy. And since the usually the hard drives and the power supplies are the weak link in any device, if you're going to use a Synology NAS in a corporate environment, I would strongly recommend you look at one of those rack-mounted units. Now, an example of a unit with uh, redundant power supplies is the RS-818 Plus or the RS-818 RP Plus. Uh, it's a high-performance 1U rack mount NAS. It has a quad-core 2.4 gig. It has 2 gig of memory up to a, a 16 gig. Uh, it has a very uh, high-speed sequential reading. You can put up to 8 drives with the uh, expansion unit. The unit comes with 4 drives. You can add an optional 10 gig uh, network adapter, which I would recommend. And it has dual power supplies, so if one of those power supplies were to fail, the other one can keep the NAS up and running until you can replace it. And seeing as that is one of the failure points in any device, hard drives and uh, power supplies, it makes sense that you want to have a redundant power in that unit. Uh, now, I believe the redundant power unit is the... Let me see here. It says dual power supplies... Yeah, that's the RS818RP+. Plus. And you can go on Synology's website and you can see others that have uh, redundant uh, uh, dual power supplies as well. So again, if you're going to use a Synology NAS in a corporate environment, you, you, would, 
you wouldn't hurt yourself at all to make sure that you have redundant power supplies. That would be my recommendation. Now, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of users have brought to my attention of on the uh, the five bay and larger Synology unit. I forget the model number, forgive me. Uh, that it has been having a large failure rate on power supplies. And those power supplies in those Synology NASs are uh, proprietary, which means that you have to go back to Synology to get that power supply. At least that's my understanding. So keep in mind, if you're putting all of your eggs in one basket and you don't have a backup power supply for your Synology NAS, you may want to consider getting one and just having it on hand if it's that critical. Because it's going to take you a while to get a hold of Synology. It's going to take a while to do a warranty claim. Meanwhile, you could be down for one or two weeks. Now, the beauty of Synology is the drive, the way they format the drives is not proprietary. You can take them out and put them into a Linux system and read the data off them if you needed to. But I find it easier just to maybe call Synology up when you order the device and say, hey, I want to order a, a another power supply for it and see what they tell you. Now on my DS918 Plus it has a power brick, an external one, and I've already ordered a replacement external power brick in the event that that one goes down. But there have been uh, some instances of Synology's, uh, those larger units, the power supply is failing on them, so be aware of it. Now, everybody I've talked to, including Morton over at My Playhouse, who has dealt with Synology before, and even their warranty support says he's gotten excellent support over the years. So I'm not real worried about it. I know Synology is a stand-up company. But if you're going to put this in a corporate environment, you need to be prepared. Take precautions to make sure you have some redundancy in place. Because if you're going to be putting all your data on this bad boy, uh, you may even want to have a second unit as a failover in a mission-critical environment. So there you go. We're going to end this video here. In the next uh, Synology video, we'll start covering some of the Synology native apps uh, like Drive and their Office Suite and their Chat and that kind of thing. We'll do a we'll do a pretty deep dive video on those. I just have to figure out how to use them so I can show you how to use them. But I thought this video would be helpful if you if any of y'all are out there running a lab and you have an Active Directory domain controller, this would assist you in adding that to that Active Directory domain. So we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. As always, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the normal stuff. Donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal and Patreon. And uh, we'll be doing some more videos as time allows. I have an interesting device that came in the other day for a client. And I'll be doing a video coming up and coming pretty soon on that. Uh, hopefully today is Friday. Hopefully I get this video posted today. And for all intents and purposes, I will be doing a live stream on Saturday at noon. Uh, I'll announce that on Twitter and Facebook so that uh, everybody knows. But come and join us for the live stream on Saturday. It ought to be fun. Anyway, thanks again for watching. And please don't forget, we will see you on the other side.